Welcome back to the Casters YouTube channel. Today, I want to talk about adding chapters to your podcast episodes so that your users can skip around and go through chapters of your interview, your podcast, whatever it is that you're putting out there in that audio format. Give them the ability to read labels of chapters, click those chapters, and move around your podcast episodes effortlessly. I'm going to show you how to do that with an app called Forecast, uh, made by the same developer as uh, the Overcast app, which supports it uh, supports chapters obviously really, really well inside the app. I'll throw a screenshot up on that and what it looks like. And uh, it's a very simple app. I'll show I'll do another video in the future of maybe Audacity so we can see this working. Uh, on two different platforms, uh, Windows and Mac, that kind of thing. But it's a free app. You don't have to pay for it. And it's also in beta. So, you know, go with it with your own risk. I haven't run into any issues using it myself. If you go to their webpage, overcast.fm slash forecast, you can see all of the features and benefits. I'm going to show it to you from the high level of creating chapters, simply naming chapters and importing your uh, files. At the end of this video, I'll talk about the, the benefits, at least as I see them, uh, for using chapters as a podcaster. Okay, so the app is right up in front of me here. You have to import a WAV file. That's not to say that you, you know, if you're using something like Zoom to record your podcast episodes, which is, you know, very popular these days, um, you could probably still convert that MP3 to a WAV file. Obviously, it's not going to be in this sort of lossless quality that an original WAV file is, but for the intent of putting markers here, uh, or chapters in here, uh, that's one workaround. I'm not an audio engineer. I don't know what happens to the, the audio quality when it goes from MP3 to WAVE and then back to MP3. There's probably a bit of a degradation there. Um, I should ask the audio engineers here at Castos. So I'm just going to pull in a, uh, an episode right here. This is just one recording uh, from a track that I did. And I'm going to hit OK. And that's going to import in. And you can see right at the top left corner that uh, there was that little spinning wheel. It was encoding that episode into MP3 format right there. So this app, if you are recording in native waveform, if you're using something like a Squadcast or Zencaster and your save and your audio is already in waveform, this app will take care of that conversion for you. It'll tell you right there that this file is one hour and three minutes long. It's 31 megabytes when it's uh, brought down to one of these um, uh, audio quality rate. So I'm going to switch it to 128 kilobits per second and watch, it's going to re-encode it. It's telling me that there's long silences here because this is just one track from a, from a, a two track episode that I did, but it's going to go ahead and encode that again. It's encoding it on the fly in the background and it's pretty darn quick. It's an hour long wave file and you can see it brought it up to uh, 62 megabytes, right? In, in file size. So it's doing it all on the fly. You're not having to re-import, re-extract, like <laughs> you're not doing all this stuff. So the podcast title, uh, in this case, is called The Matt Report. Episode title is going to say uh, Interview with Matt Olenweg. And then you can summarize the file here. This is saving that data, what's known as metadata, inside the file. So any app that picks up metadata from within a file, not necessarily your podcast host like Castos or your WordPress website where you're saving this data, it's right inside the file. So I'll say this is a summary of the show. And you can fill that out and put that in. And you can also drop in an image here, okay? And that image will be the actual image uh, of the file. Let's take a look at the one I already converted so you can see it. So if we zoom into this one right here, I'm gonna right click and go to get info. I'm going to expand this a little bit. You can see right here, this is in the finder window with a more info uh, of the file. You can see when I titled this, there's the title, the WordPress community with Matt Mullenweg. It's got all of the information, the year it was recorded, the album that it was on uh, and the comment. And this is the, this is that information I filled in in the summary saved directly in the file. Same thing with the preview. It has that image baked into the preview. So any platform that supports this kind of metadata will display all of this stuff. You might be saying, well, what's the importance of this? Well, if the file is getting distributed around or somebody sends, you know, downloads the, the audio file, um, well, there's like a branding and marketing piece to it that's very valuable, right? You can see your logo in some, somebody can see your logo inside their, uh, you know, Mac Finder or Windows uh, Explorer or whatever. Uh, or if it's getting passed around the internet into some other distribution channel, that data follows it along. So even if it's not directly connected to your podcast host like Castos, 
there's a chance that another platform can save your metadata, expose it, and get new listeners to your show, see your branding, get the summary without having to get you know back to your website. There's a lot of value there. Okay, let's go back to uh, the app. Okay, so now let's add uh, the chapter. And the one sort of quirky thing to me, and it's just something I had to kind of get used to as I was creating the chapters, uh, we go to the bottom left-hand corner, we hit the plus sign. The start time is probably for everybody going to be at the zero minute mark, uh, because typically what you're doing is you're either writing in, it's like the intro or the ads uh, for a podcast, depending on you know how your podcast is formatted. So that's the first one. And then you hit plus again, and you have to find the start time yourself. Like you have to know where these start times are, or you're exporting them from your editing software. I use Descript to edit my podcast, and I simply just went to the, the moment, um, you know, where I was finding like a question that I was asking in this particular um, podcast episode, uh, like maybe like right here, I'd put my cursor there. It says I'm at the four minute and 55 second mark. So then I would come to the start time of um, this particular chapter. And I would put in 455, 455, and then title it. And I might say, you know, whatever the question was. Uh, this one was about Simple Note app investment. And then you would go through and find the next chapter or the next question. You know, it's to obviously it's totally up to you. Uh, maybe get go over to this one and say 911 is when I ask a new question, right? So I keep losing my mouse here. Uh, so I'll come back down, 9-11, and it, and it puts it in a weird spot all the time, which I felt was a little weird. And always having, having to type in the timestamp is a little, it just doesn't feel smooth every time I go in, because now I have to double click back in to add the chapter. And I'll say just question two, because I don't remember what the question was. But I could put a link, I could put an image in for each chapter. Um, it's small potatoes. I mean, it was still... It's still fairly effortless, but eh, little things that I think could get a little bit better from the user perspective when you're bouncing back and forth between an editing app and um, the forecast app. Now, again, if I was importing chapters directly from, which I haven't tried yet, markers in Descript to see if it works in forecast, maybe my life is a little bit easier because now all the markers are in there and I simply just have to go and name them. And if I want to put links in or images in, I can. Um, that's largely it. Once you get to your, uh, you finish up all your chapters, this file is already being, you know, rendered in the background or, or uh, you know, turned from an, a WAV file into an MP3. And then you just save it to the desktop. I'm just going to hit save. And it saves it right there. And the beauty is, is all of this stuff is happening on the fly and it's ultra fast. <laughs> Again, we'll take a look at the, you know, get info. You can see, the, obviously, there's the image, the comments, the, the uh, excuse me, here's the comments right here. This is a summary of the show, uh, the Matt Report podcast, you recorded 2021. Very easy, very straightforward. Um, look, I think that anyone who might be on the fence about doing chapters is, it's added time to your already busy schedule of producing a podcast. That's certainly a thing, um, although you can get a fish, more efficient at it as you as you get better at it. But I think the first thing that many people think about in a podcast, especially if you're a creator, is you're thinking, I want people to listen to the whole thing. <laughs> right? I don't want people skipping around, right? Maybe I do have ads in there and, and we're always trying to, you know, really push our content, you know, as much as, as we possibly can because we spend a lot of time creating it. The thing about chapters, though, as a content consumer myself is for well, two reasons. One, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I watch a lot of YouTube videos. I appreciate when chapters are in there because I can skip around as chapters enable you to do to the hot points that I want. And I actually appreciate the content creator more because of that. A lot of people might think, well, they're not going to stick around. They're not going to listen to everything. That's okay. Like, I still really love it. Like, I love this creator more because there's, there's chapters in there, you know, for, for shows that I, that I really want to be able to skip around in. Uh, and second, maybe I do listen to most episodes all the way through, which I do. But the ones I want to save, like there's some podcast episodes that I want to save to be, you know, motivated again by listening to, or there's something in there that I want to go back and dig for. Chapters, I can save that and know, like, I know that there's chapters in here, so I can find that thing really easily if I ever want to go back to it. So it makes your podcast episodes more evergreen at the same time. You know, people who complain about long YouTube videos, like maybe even this YouTube video, 
there's chapters. So I can't help, like, I'm going to make the content as long as I feel I need to make it. And there's chapters there for you to skip around. There's no more excuses. There's no more complaining about long videos because you have chapters now to skip around. Okay. Forecast app on Mac. It works a treat for creating chapters. Uh, are you going to start using chapters in your podcast? Have you been doing it already? And what do you use to make chapters? Let me know in the comments below. Forecast app. Get it for free. Overcast.fm slash forecast. I almost forgot the name of it right there. Uh, Castos.com. Start your podcast there. Register for our free podcast academy if you want more educational stuff like this. Only at academy.castos.com. Academy.castos.com. Subscribe to the channel. Thumbs up to the video. If you want more stuff like this, youtube.com slash castos. We'll see you in the next video.